What's up guys, and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. It's episode number 14, and we're starting today's episode off with our final game of November on the back of our 2-0 win over Heidenheim, which saw our win streak extend to 10 games in the two-liga. And of course, after the big win against Union Berlin and the following win as well, we're now top of the table by four points as we close out November in today's episode opener. And as you can see, just 16 minutes into the game, one of the reasons we are top well, is the strike partner of this man, Ransford Yabar, but the emergence of this young strike from Leverkusen, Gadik Klu, has been a really good source of goals this year in his first season for us, scores our first goal of the game and makes it 1-0, and not soon after, 22 minutes in, Dia Wusi. I love this guy's pace to pieces, man. I really, really do, and at this level, it is so important to have quick and strong and physically strong players. Dia Wusi certainly is. He's got that pace, and you just sort of just leave his men in the dust there and go through, and he does it again here, 64 into the game 20 minutes after the restart that no one's even close to him no one's even near him and that's the whole point man I know that we talk about FIFA and how important pace is at any level but even more so at this level if you are doing an RTG and you're down the lower leagues it's really really vital you have some quick players in your team because technically the players are always going to be pretty poor they're always going to have some lower than average stats when it comes down to things like passing and dribbling and shooting and defensive awareness and tackling and so on and so forth but pace and strength and jumping and those physical stats they're really really crucial and that's why again at this level having really quick players on the wing is really really important and very helpful indeed so Dai Wusi with the brace in that game alongside Gadikli in a 3-1 victory did throw away the clean sheet right towards the end of the game but hey 15 games in right now four points clear at the top of the table 11 straight wins for Dynamo Dresden it's crazy to think that at the start of the season we only won two of our first five games I'm not going to sit in here and try and deny it I was awful I mean I was absolutely awful at the start of the season but now we're in cruise control and we're playing Dynamo Dresden football so following out we had a scouting update and an academy update as we've entered November sorry entered December and as you can see we have picked up a really decent talent straight away he became our highest rated player in youth academy his name is Marvin Schaefer his best stat is sprint speed but he's got some really interesting stats he's six foot with right back and centre back his list of positions but to me now maybe I'm being a little bit interesting just for the sake of being interesting whilst he definitely could play as a defense-minded right midfielder with a decent amount of pace uh, or a center back being at six foot with good defensive stats I think personally he could be retrained to play as a holding midfielder with the four-star weak foot and again, some pretty versatile stats. Very good defensive player. Again, he's got a little bit of pace to him. So there's no reason why we couldn't deploy him as a defensive wide midfielder in our 3-5-2. But to me, I think we should phase him in field and play him as a holding mid. He shows great potential, as you can see. And yeah, obviously because we don't play fullbacks in this team, that makes his uh, primary position redundant. Again, we could play him centre-back with the uh, the six foot. And, you know, the, the decent defensive stats, not too bad either. But yeah, again, to me, with a good passing stat, 62 for both short passes. And long pass I think really with the four star weak foot as well he's that defensive midfielder we've been looking for I said it in a very recent episode we've been looking for a defensive midfielder to play alongside Finn Ole Becker who of course plays a little bit further up in the CM role in our asymmetrical 3-4-1-2 so I, I think Marvin Schaefer he could be that holding mid we were looking for there if we get him the high defensive work rate improve the stamina as well there's no reason why this guy couldn't flourish in that defensive midfield kind of anchor man role in this team so I'll hand him his debut in the second game of today's episode, second of four in the first one of the final month of 2021, taking on Carl Ruhr here at Dresden. Uh, I can never pronounce the, the names properly, can I? But I fell behind in this game 21 minutes in, but you know what we're known for, man. Scoring loads of goals, shocking defending, admittedly, and also being the comeback kid. So after we fell behind, I wasn't too phased. I knew we'd get back on level terms, not before long, and 33 minutes in. It's that man once again. Fired a blank in the last game against Firth, but back on the score sheet in this one. Our top scorer and the top scorer in the league, Ransford Yeboah, makes it 1-1, and a debut assist for the 16-year-old Marvin Schaefer as well. Didn't have much involvement in the goal, just offload it to him and watch Ransford Yeboah do the rest, but it still counts as we go back on level terms. 20 minutes after the restart, a chance to take the lead first time in the game and would do so as well. It's a strike duo that was so good last season. Ransford Yeboa to uh, Daphna as uh, Rob, uh, sorry, Batman assists Robin as we go 2-1 up and we're in front for the first time in the game. No real surprise, we're known for being the comeback kids, but with 10 minutes to go holding on to the one goal lead and a big three points here as we aim to close out the calendar year with the win streak surviving. Unfortunately, 
it would go after some pretty shocking defending. Yeah, awful from me there. Trying to play out from the back from Pfeiffer. Gave the ball away stupidly. And Karlsruhe find themselves a late leveller and a late point. Or so they fall until... Oh, no, I shanked it. Absolutely shanked it. Whenever I can see the late goal, I'm kind of like the fetus. I'm always like, ah, oh, it's over. And as soon as Hoffman got that level, I was like, ah, oh, it's over. We ain't going to get ourselves the win now. The win streak will end after, I think, 11 or possibly 12 games. And as Schaefer was running through one and one I swear my heart was beating like crazy. But I was so nervous. I think, what a way this would be for the 16-year-old's debut. An assist for the first goal. And then the game winner absolutely shanked it going through one and one That's why he's going to be a defense-minded player in this team, not an offensive player player now he's he's not got the ability to be a goal scorer in this team that was absolutely atrocious that's rounds for Dubai going through one on one that's the game winner in stoppage time but for Schaefer the 16 year old I guess the pressure got to the kid there find it way wide the post I was thinking should I include that in the highlights package yeah I can't sweep that one under the rug there awful finish from me as I spurned the chance to win the game laid some we would do that in the following game though away against Hanover 96 great team to do an RTG with in this year's FIFA career they've got a real stay Stadium, as we know some lovely kits too and a really interesting club history but in a game a few chances which you don't say often at this level you're still tied at 0-0 until with nine minutes to go Albert Simon scores yet another goal and the game winner to give us the three points which means that we've approached the halfway stage or reached the halfway stage there we are the unbeaten streak survives 13 wins in 17 42 goals league's highest scorers no surprises there but two points clear of Freiburg it's a small gap but we are nine clear of what were looking like the best team in the division Union Berlin who have really fallen off the pace. In the race of the Golden Boot, Ransford Dubois is leading it. No surprises there. 13 and 17. But look at Albert Simon. 9 in 17 for our number 8. He's been amazing this year and third in the top scorer charts. And in terms of top assists, you've got Gadikli and Simon both with 7 uh, alongside Terrazino as they have the 1, 2, 3 there in the top 3. But as for the Golden Glove, Sasha Hubner leading the way right now by 1. 8 in 16, averaging 1 every 2 games. I decided to start him over Kevin Broll this season. Kevin has only played 1 game all season long. Sasha started the other 16. And I'm very happy with the decision as well. I know he is four or five ratings lower than Kevin, but as you know, he's about nine years younger and he is the future of the show and great potential tag as well. So Sasha remaining our starting goalkeeper for now. And as things stand, he's holding down the fort. But uh, still falling out, we had a risk of losing five players on free transfers with January a couple weeks ago. I did give new contracts to Kevin Brol, uh, Dai Wusi, of course, uh, Becker, not, that's not Finn Ole Becker, but Robin Becker, a fifth choice centre half, and also as well, had to give him a new contract too. Didn't need to do it as he's under the age of 23 and therefore he can't be poached away on a free transfer but I thought you know what why wait any longer Ransford Yeboah deserves a new contract he gets one and as you can see he shows great potential as well he's up three ratings this year 74 overall 13 and 17 with six assists as well and again he's been absolutely amazing this year just like he was last season a lot of it, he's got 82 finishing now as well he grows so quickly he's always in great goal scoring form it won't be long, I think, until this guy hits 80 overall. And he's still got a few ratings to grow, but his progression is so quick. He's always in great form. So, Ransom Dubar made him club captain. Haven't regretted that one bit because of the third game of four in today's episode here, taking on, uh, sorry, fourth and final game in today's episode, taking on Heidenheim away from home in the uh, final game of the calendar year of 2021. It was Ransom Dubar that would give us the lead. A pretty simple finish for him, but it'll take it, and it was six minutes to go. This is why he got the new contract extension, and I didn't wait until post January. He's too good he's club captain he shows great potential we know that for sure now he's got the new contract and a brace in this game so a season score goals 14 and 15 for the season I mean, 40 goals isn't going to happen in a 34-game season, let's be honest here. But back-to-back 30-goal -back seasons, that's more than doable. He's now hit the halfway point, and we've just gone over the halfway point in the season. So that's what I'm targeting from Ransford Yuboa this year. Back-to-back -back golden boots and back-to-back 30-plus -back goal seasons. So for the final game of 2021, as we keep the unbeaten streak alive, we did promote one of our youth players to the first team as he was now unsettled. It's another goalkeeper who's showing great potential. I can't believe it. I literally cannot believe this, man. I said the start of the series, and I can't find good goalkeepers when I'm doing youth scouting this year, but instead we've got three of them. How typical is that, man? I've waited long, long, long time to get one decent youth goalkeeper. I've now 
got three in less than two seasons. Milan, of course, out on loan at BSC Young Boys. Sasha Hubner, our current starter. And Al Bergman, Andre Bergman, looks pretty decent. We're just showing great potential tag as well. And another scouting update and an academy update as well. Uh, Engel, who we picked up, looks pretty decent. But Leo Kasper has now hit 60 overall. I talked about this guy as possibly being the highest potential player in the academy with 82 to 88 potential. He is now 60 rated. I don't think I'll give him a pro deal just yet, as we've got a lot of depth in the centre back role. But I don't think it will be too long until I give him a pro deal. I've given a development plan of ball playing defenders. So we can train that one star, horrendous one star week for up uh, a little bit quickly. But um, yeah, he looks pretty decent. And again, probably the most exciting player in the youth academy right now. So January here, the window is open. We've got 900,000 pound, around 900 grand to a million uh, in the transfer budget. But I don't know if we'll be doing any business in January. As I talked about it many times, I think it's good to save money and keep money in the budget to roll over to the next season for the potential of a higher budget in the following season. And when you look at the side here, yes, there's a lack of squad depth, but really in this division with just 34 games a season and now we're out of the cup as well, it's not that important to us. We're up to a three star team now, growing half a star, 70 all across the board, and right now 18 games in, just past the halfway point, top of the table by two points and nine clear of Union Berlin in third as well. As things stand, we're where we want to be. Yes, we've ended the winning run, but we're still undefeated and right now in pole position as we enter the January window. But that will end today's episode of Club and Country, guys. A big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.